Yes, yeah, so I'm Julia, and um, my son is going to be um, 16 soon. He spent the best part of a year out of education because um, I was like fighting the system from, from he was in primary school. So if I'm in primary school, um, they observe that he taking information a little bit different. He right. doesn't like someone to come into his space. So, for example, if a teacher, a lot of teachers seem to have the habit of coming very closely in children's face when they're speaking. Yeah, and yeah. He doesn't like that type of interaction with you at all. It just it gets him, and he, if he, he, if he feels that you've invaded his space, or you know, maybe the teacher may have had bad breath, he will say, which kind of gets yeah. him into trouble. Right, and this was started in primary school. This started in primary school. Right. So, whereas you know, he, if they have a like a supply teacher, and he wasn't told the day before his behavior to the your teacher would be not good because he like the way they teach would be different from the teacher he's normally used to. So he really likes routine and structure. That's something he like routine and structure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So when that doesn't happen, then it becomes a problem. So what I've identified over a period of time, by the time he gets to reception, yeah. he was that problem will occur if he doesn't get picked for something, he doesn't understand it. And also his attention span was a little bit short. So he right. could listen to a chapter being read and he kind of switch off in the halfway through it. So he will put his hand up in class and he doesn't understand why he got yeah. it wrong. So then he they will get upset. Then he struggles to articulate, get the words out to articulate himself. So it's like a kind of communication thing and the fact that actually the teachers that haven't picked up on that fact that he needs to be treated in a certain way specific to him rather yes. than a blanket way of treating every single child. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So as it carries on in, into, um, you know, year, getting into um, from reception into year one, then we will notice that, you know, for example, there are certain things like they, they were so oh, Delana did this today. And he was like, you know, he, he doesn't like if he's not asked the question, like if something occurred and some one child would say he did this, yeah. then he would be upset not being asked as being accused. Yeah. Because yeah? he like he hasn't been able to put his version of what happened forward exactly so then when they accuse him of what is being said then he would they get sent out the class he gets sent out the class so this becomes a, a, like a natural like becomes almost like a natural thing happening every day from so, the beginning of year seven would you say like it almost instantly in that transition to secondary school well so that was my concern so at this point by the time he gets to year three i myself went to my gp and said you know um you know would it I'm not sure what it is, but there's something a little bit different about him from his sister. Because both my children were born prematurely, but he was more premature than my daughter. Okay. So um, she listened to me. My GP, oh, that's the thing. My GP always listened to me. That's so she listened to me and she referred him for him to be assessed to see what helps that he may need to get. Yeah. And from that referral, we went to Sunshine House. And when we got there, they had, there was a psychologist and the psychologist I realized as from the onset seems to be focusing more on me as a parent and it was more seems to be I like the more of me the single black parent yeah so, I mean uh, it seems to be a like recurring theme is that actually you go and seek help and then you end up being questioned as a parent and then the safety and the safeguarding issues come into play and that feels to yeah. be a disproportionate thing towards black parents than white parents, actually. Exactly. And by this time I went to, to seek my GP help, what had happened, there was an incident at school where one child had crouched down and there was a little crack from the pants to the back, you know, and yeah. my son had pointed at it and touched it. And rather than the ed teacher contacts me and spoke to me about it, she actually reported my son in year three to social services that's insane so i got a call from social services basically almost like they were trying to label my child like he was a sexual predator and i'm like really? what so when she spoke to me and said what happened she goes i was confused when i got this referral i was like you know children in school yes it's not appropriate that he put he touched the person with his finger they pointed that the, the pants was separated from covering the bottom properly hmm. but how do you know justify calling social services on yeah. a child without even the parent, in, the parent being informed. I mean, I don't even think that might be legal. 
in order to do that? Well, it, it was done by the head teacher at the, at the primary school at the time. So now my concerns are elevated and I went to my GP and I was like, you know, yeah. something needs to be done. And she was like, you know, she listened to me, she referred her. So went to Sunshine House, saw this education site. I don't know if it was education psychologist, but it was some form of psychologist. Right. And what he had proceeded to do was basically, he was interviewing me. And then I saw one of my son's report from this, this, his, his class teacher at the time. Yes. And in the report, it had listed like, you know, um, the concerns and at the end of it, there goes, he's not a threat to anyone at this point. At this point, like, as a boy in year three. Yeah. And I'm like, no threat. What does that mean? So I saw that. I was like, okay. And then this psychologist focused more on like said, me, single black female parent. And the next thing I knew is like, you know, he said, but the school said this, the school said that. And I'm saying to him, as a child and a parent of another child prematurely, I know something is not right. He needs help. Because even with at home, he struggles to articulate himself. Like yeah. he, he wants to say, so he gets upset rather than yeah. Being, yeah. get the words out. And then the, about a week or two later, I actually receive a call from someone saying that I have been referred by the psychologist for education for, for parenting class. That's insane. And I'm like, what for? And I says to her, like, literally, I am not attending the parenting class. I've actually seeking help for my child. My, if I was okay. my parent, I wouldn't have seek help. Exactly. Yeah. So then we, um, that, that, that went away and then it carried on where I had the meeting with the teacher, because funny enough, there was a parenting meeting the following week. So when I saw that report, because I only saw that report at the actual meeting at Sunshine House. So when I, when I went back to the teacher after that week later, having the meeting with her, I said to her, what do you mean when you say he's not a threat to anyone at this point? Oh, she doesn't mean anything by it. I said, but you put it down there. What does that mean? What, what behavior is he displaying? for yeah. you to feel that he's going to be endangering anyone or he, he should be someone that should be monitored for that. I said, he's, 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 he's a child, he's a baby, really. Completely, and she, yeah. So she kind of like, you know, tried to explain it and that's not what she meant and everything else. So um, it carried on where almost every other day he would get sent out of class. He gets sent out of I class. I didn't even know that that was a thing that you got sent out of class. In primary he school. was getting sent out of class so many times and get sent to a class that is irrelevant to his age group. Just like, you know, go to that class or just get out or, and stuff like that. Yeah. And um, so then they get to the point where um, it was one day they were going up the staircase in the school after um, I think they came from PE or something. And the teacher literally went up into my son's face and screamed at him to do something and he said his face was covered in her saliva and he screamed back in her face the next thing i knew i was called in he's been excluded for three days for uh, for, 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 um, for aggressive behavior towards the teacher so that's where it all start going downhill can you just give some context to the school in terms of like i know these issues occur even in diverse schools but like can you give some context about the pupils and the teachers and they, they, they were, the school was predominantly Caucasian teachers, but also what I observed, there was student there that was significantly, like obviously have needs hmm. that you probably would deem probably five, six years prior would be in a specialist education department. Yeah. Because there was a boy there. This boy took a chunk out of my son when he was in reception for just touching another toy. The child just literally leapt on my son and bit him. And even then when that occurred, nobody told me. When I picked up my son, and there was a big mark on him and he told me that this child had bit him. And then when I spoke to the teacher about it, the next day, this was a Caucasian child. The parent accosted me in the playground. Yeah, the parent. My child got bitten by her child because he picked up a toy. But and this boy, your child is a threat. Yeah, and this little boy is like visually, you could see that there was some sort of need for him. Yeah, and he was never everything he was put in every play. Sometimes they have a play. This child would just stand there and look around like that and everything else. But Delano was always excluded from yeah. from, from from stuff. And then he went on to there was another boy caucasian boy and he would just say inappropriate stuff like he goes i want to have a big fat poop 
I want to have a big rest. And he would just say inappropriate stuff and the inappropriate stuff. And that child never gets sent out of class or anything like that. But, but my son was always targeted to get sent out of class. So at this point now, when the teacher screamed in his face and he screamed back, and then they decided he needed to be excluded, the deputy head now came to me one morning in the playground. He goes to me, you know, we were thinking, would you be okay if he got seen by the educational psychologist? So I thought, okay, this is going to take it to a step where you're going to support him more. Get some understanding there. Exactly. So then this got set up, but the way it was set up, um, the educational psychologist, funny enough, was a black gentleman, but his approach was completely off. Whereas he was coming to see my son and the way it was being done is they were removing my son from class, like in the middle of the day. And, you know, here's my son is a black child, black male child. His father is not present. And there's this black man who's calling him to see him in the afternoon. So his children start to tease him thinking the guy is his father. It's horrible. But, and then also my son didn't want to miss out on what's going on in the classroom. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So when they do get him out the classroom to see this education psychologist, my son wasn't engaging with him, but on that he, he, he takes time to engage with people. He has to get to know you first. And have some sort of rapport. I think a lot of kids have that actually and to kind of build. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's natural. You just want to like, you know, you're going to kind of think, you know, if, if my spirit tells me to speak to this person or not. So anyway, it, and this, but the second or third um, meeting with my son, I was called him to, to, to see the education psychologist. And he was saying to him that, you know, he's not engaging with him. And then I found out that my son came home and told me that this gentleman was telling him about um, the woodlands. And I'm like, what is that? He was telling my son that's a school for children who don't behave in school. And that's where he's going to go. Mm. And then when I researched what the woodlands was, I realized it was for children who was being excluded from mainstream education. I'm like, why would you be going to a primary school to tell a child really, that it's so dangerous to even share that rhetoric at that age because now your son is internalizing everything that's being told to him yeah which is actually setting him up to do something like that and to end up going to a school like that whether that would be in the kind of future or not it's just an awful thing to do because re kids really like take on what they're being told exactly you're having to combat that in the home which isn't your job because Really, what you're doing in the home should just be nurtured in the school environment. Exactly. So then, um, you know, I have went to the school and I have a conversation about that. And it goes, oh, I did not tell him that he will go there. I tell him that what can happen. But I said, but why is that a conversation? Yeah. So he then, um, then said to, to my son, because my son didn't want to engage you, how would he feel if somebody's making time to see you and you don't want to engage with them? So he now make it about himself, which I was very confused about. Mm -hmm. And then he proceeded. So he did recommend that my son has like um, speech therapy assessment. Okay. The speech therapy assessment was taking place, but nothing was implemented. So they, he took the assessment and there were no results and there was no repercussions afterwards. So the result came out with, with what should be, imp with what should be recommendation, what should be implemented, that he should have speech therapy but by the school, but nothing was done. But all they did, they eventually now decided that they will make a plan in the class, but mm. not to let him feel that he's been, like, you know, highlighted. So they will let him know what is going to happen the day before. He also used to have to have, like, a toy that he plays with, that thing that he fiddles with. So they have him choose a fiddle toy. So they kind of in indirectly kind of do the things they know he required, but unofficially. Right. But I was concerned that it wasn't being dealt correctly. And my concern was saying to them, I'm concerned that if this is not dealt with correctly, if he, whatever support he requires is not done officially, then he's going to go into secondary school. Yeah. And then he's going to struggle. Yeah, so, of course. And that leap is actually a huge leap and one that there's no kind of conversation or communication between those two kind of education systems, which is really dangerous, particularly for young black kids. Exactly. So then, you know, he carried on and he carried on. It was like almost every day he's been sent off class. It, was, it, it, was, it becomes such a roller coaster. So then um, it comes to him finishing year six, final day of year six, going to secondary school after that. 
And then what occurred, I received a phone call and the very, very last day of secondary school for him, like literally an hour after they got let out of one should come out, can you please come to school? Because we need to give you some information. Why? It turned out they had done a full recommendation for him to be assessed by CAMS on the very last day and was trying to email it to CAMS but for whatever reason, I think the grace of God impeded, it didn't go through because I wasn't even aware that this assessment was being done. Oh my God. So I, I rushed to the school from wherever I was, went to um, collect this document and it was a big white envelope, broad envelope given to me with documents filled and they were explaining to me that I need to take it to camps. And this basically was his records from the education psychologist, the um, speech therapist, all the things that should have been put in place. And used in it actually in a progressive, important way to help him and aid him. And help me choose the correct secondary school for him as well. Yeah. Being used because that would have given me an insight of what, where I need to place him. Yeah. And what, I need, what type of system I need to look into. So when this all occurred, then he started, um, started secondary school. And then we started secondary school and I made it my point of duty. I, I arrived at school with him on the first day and I went to them and I said, this is what occurred. He sh you should be in touch with CAMS to have him assess the da 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 and whatever the case. Nobody listened. By the second day my son was in school, he was being put in detention. He was being put in detention because he didn't have a PE kit first week. He was put in attention because he, he talked back because the school had a rule that he shouldn't respond regardless of whatever it was. And by the time it ended the first term, half term, my son was excluded for four days by the head teacher. And he was on report. I actually got told by a teacher when it was trying, so why are you put him on the report? She goes, we're going to get him. So I'll go to pick up my son from school and sit outside. Everybody's left. Can't find myself. Oh, he's, 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 in, he's in detention. What? Because he wasn't wearing the right shoes. And then on this particular day when he got excluded, for um, excluded, I normally hear from him like he finished his school. He was messing with mommy, just finished school. I always have my children messing with me, got on the bus. So I'm aware which direction they are if something yeah, else to work. I couldn't get nothing from my son. And then when I called the school, the receptionist told me that, you know, school is finished. They haven't seen him. He's left. Okay, I'm calling his phone, his phone is not responding. Call the school, nothing. Eventually, about an hour after I could not find him, because this was also in winter, so I was concerned it's getting darker for him to come out by himself. I got a text messaging from him saying, Mommy, I'm with the, uh, I'm with the head teacher. Like, I'm with Miss Baldwin. So I said, why are you with Miss Baldwin? He goes, he's, so he's, she, he's, he's basically hiding and sending me a message. He goes, because... Um, he wasn't wearing his tie. So I literally was getting my, my, my feet down and I just literally grabbed my slippers in my flip-flops in the middle of winter, jump into the car because I need to know what's going on while my child is. So I called the school again. I'm like, I just got a message from my son. He's with Miss Baldwin. How do you tell me that she's not aware he's not there? I said, but he just spoke to me and told me this by message. So at this time I'm driving calling the, print, the office for the principal. She's telling me that he's not there. I said, something is not right. When I got there, the, he was in the office with this head teacher and he was crying. Oh my God. I was told by another head, a deputy head that she, he saw my son crying, say he wants to go home to his mommy. Because he's year seven, he's still young, 11 years old. And it's a huge transition as well. Yeah, I, I, want, I want to go home to my mommy. And then they were telling me he was, he, was, he was aggressive and talking back to her and everything else. So then the next day, after I got there now, I picked him up and we had to go back the next day. We went back the next day when we yep. got there and we went into the meeting. And when I said to her, um, what did he say? She was like, you know, he was rude. He was saying all these stuff. So I said, I'm very confused because your deputy told me categorically, I saw You're him with you. Son crying. Yeah. Yeah. Go home with my mommy. Yeah. So I said, was he defiant or was he scared? Because to me, that sounds like a scared child. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that wasn't listened to. He was put on three days exclusion for, for not wearing his tie after school. So then it transpired. What had happened? As they hold new wearing tie, they're messing about with each other. They pull on the tie, but my son is very meticulous about how he does stuff. 
So if he's going to put his pants on first, the pants get put on first. Yeah. He doesn't, if it goes the other way around, it doesn't work for him. So he's standing there trying to get the tie the correct way he knows how to tie. He wasn't moving fast enough for her. So she says to him, get it done. He goes, I am doing it. But like I said, they have this rule. Don't talk back. So yeah. based on that, that's why he was brought in. So when he spent the three days now, and we went back to reintegrate him into school. Yeah, yeah. Sat into the meeting with the head teacher. And then when she was saying, to, she, so basically she was, she was reiterating her version, but she wanted my son to confirm exactly what she said. But he goes, that's not what happened. And I said, based on also what your deputy said, yeah. what you're saying doesn't add up. Yeah. She looked at my son in my presence and said to him, I am so disappointed in you. Go home and reflect. And I said, I'm sorry. You are sending my son home because? Because he needs to reflect. He told the truth and he's out of time. Because he told the truth, his recollection and your recollection doesn't add up. Because you were saying he was defiant and rude. And I heard a skid try because he was crying. So I said to her, I have to go out. So what do I do? She goes, well, he needs to either leave in here, we put him in isolation, and we can give him a sandwich for lunch, or you take him home because he can't be seen on the street and then come back tomorrow. So in total, my son was excluded for four days for not wearing his tie after school, not putting it on quick enough. So unbeknown to me, I didn't re- so at this point, I decided I was going to take him out of that school because it wasn't serving because based on every detention, and all this kind of stuff, it wasn't serving him. Yeah. And he was also being bullied. So what I decided to do was I got the, in the one meeting, the same deputy head who told me that he had seen my son crying saying he wants to go home, I said to him that I wanted my son to leave the school. Yeah, and of course. He said to me that I will assist you in doing so. What schools would you like? I gave him the name of the schools I would like. Then one, because I'm, I'm like the parent that if you tell me don't go to the school, I am going to the school. Yeah, 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 of course. That's, I'm that type of parent. Like, when my daughter was in sixth form, I found out she was being bullied, and it was the day before the cutoff period, and they told me, Julia, don't go to the school. You need to call them because this is what happened. And I'm like, okay, I won't go to the school. The very next day, I got up early, I got dressed, I dropped my son to the school early, and I went and did what? Straight to the school. Yeah. The next yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, Just I deal with it directly. Wait. For that lecture to finish, my daughter had a meeting the next day and started the next day. They were like, how did you do that? Don't tell me not to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's how I work. It yeah? just shouldn't so, be the case that you should be having to rely on your, on your kid who was in year three, who your kid who was in year seven, to hear the truth, because that should be shared by someone who is like a responsible adult. And it's really scary, actually, how they can manipulate yeah, truth. and it's really important that parents actually do listen to their kids, particularly in situations like this, where it often comes from a kind of racist, prejudiced background. Yeah, but I believe that's exactly what it is. Because to think to think about it, how do you tell me that my child is not in the school compound when he's sitting in an office yeah. with a teacher yeah. screaming at him? Like several people told me my child wasn't in the school. This is in winter. This was like near yeah. December. It was getting <laughs> dark. Really scary. It was December, it was dark. Okay, in December by three o'clock, it's dark. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah? And I was looking for my child and the old category told me that my child wasn't there. The, the principal secretary told me, the receptionist told me. Yeah. And my child wasn't able to sneak and send me that text message. I would know where my child is and, and they would have let him out to travel in the dark all by himself to come home. And anything could have happened to him. Well, yeah, we know that now as well. Yeah. yeah really dangerous actually so when so when I, I wasn't getting any feedback from the school that i'd chosen i went to the school and it goes i've never heard of your son and i've never heard of the teacher that you're talking about so what ended up happening did you ended up moving him into a different school or did you end up homeschooling him so i, I ended up um moving him from so i put in for my uh, now i realize i have to put whatever move he has has to be a managed move because he was excluded i can't just move him yeah yeah so then I tried to still get him to be moved and it wasn't happening. So I contacted my MP and on the basis of I contact my MP, then within weeks, he was offered a place at a different school. 
but it wasn't the one I was asked for. The one, I, the one I asked for was like 10 minutes from home. This one they gave us was like 40 minutes away from home. And I only found out the day before the meeting that he was at school. So unfortunately he went to that school and there was, uh, and, and then, it, then he got excluded from that school as well because his needs were not being met. The issue, the root of the problem yeah. was not being met, which is a needed support to be able to articulate himself verbally and how to, to handle his emotions. Yeah, so yeah. So based on this, now when that failed, I said, I'm not sending him back to the original school because oh. nobody's actually listening to what is being said because although he was only at this school for a short period of time, they had identified that he needed support and was in the process of applying for that. Yeah. So, so when that fell, fell through the goals, this is what you need to tell them that we're doing and this is what he needs to have. They weren't listening. So I didn't send him back there, but then I made a catastrophic mistake because I'm Seventh-day Adventist. I chose to send him to the Eden School, which was further away from us, but I thought it's a Christian background. Yeah. And struggle and scrape and pay the fee. Worst mistake ever, because they were even more less equipped to deal and with my son. the private school now. Yeah. So it's the Eden School. So now he went there, and that's where it all literally went even worse, because this school did not have any... Um, electronic data statistically for his grades or anything. I found out later on that he was being bullied, dragged around in the toilets every day. And, you know, it, 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 it was just awful. So at this point, I had to even told them how to apply for the education care plan for him because I found out about the education care plan when I visited the one secondary school and happened to give a visit by the SEND department. He goes, mom, did you know you can apply for an education care plan? I goes, no. He goes, yes, you can apply for it. And he will get support in class when he needs it and so forth. So I proceeded now to go for this education care plan on my own, but I was rejected. So when he got to the Eden school, I told them that they need to apply for it for him to get the support. Yeah. They had no clue what I was talking about. So I had to get all the forms and get it done and everything. And then, you're paying for this school. I'm paying for this school. That's yeah. Insane. <laughs> so then... But by the time it come for the assessment to be done, my child was being bullied. Uh, like, you know, she was trying to take mo extort money from him. Then they started to exclude him as well. I would go to bed and wake up in the morning to an email tell me that this child said he did this and he need to be excluded for two days or three days. You went to school and they would look at him and goes, what are you doing here? Didn't your mom tell you not to come in? Yeah. Then this school went even from worse. It went on a school trip to Spain with the school and I found that later they missed the flight at the airport they housed the children in a one bedroom house with their church brought her sister with about 20 children then they proceeded to go to Spain and my son shared a room with one of the teachers then my son woke up to find his trainers in the toilet and his bag with his passport and money was outside in the dumpsters and children were bullying telling him that he should kill himself that is so dramatic so I had to take him out of that school completely. Then I'd lost my sister that time. There was a, that was a year ago. And then because I told them based on my, I lost faith in them to take care of my son in all aspects of his education and emotionally and everything else. Of course, They yeah. told me that they weren't allowing me to use the school to get an education care plan. So what they did when the education um, psychologists from the local authority went to do the assessment, they painted my son in the most horrible way. Oh. They made it seem like he should be caged. So I got the education care plan, and I was like, oh, I got it now, all excited, thinking that he would get the support. I can just choose another mainstream school that is not going to be paid for because this doesn't work for him. Of course, yeah. I applied for about 10 schools, and nobody wanted to take my son because I had gone in to sign up for the plan finalizing, not realizing what was in the plan because it was at the date of my sister passing away. And um, all the school didn't want him. Like even the specialist school that I was being signposted to, which I didn't want to put him in, that the one that like, kind of looks like, you know, more mainstream, but they have more specialist help. And they yeah. were yeah. that's what he needed. I didn't feel that's what he needed, but they were saying that. So I thought, I look at the one that looks more like a mainstream school, but you probably have more support in there. Yeah, they yeah. didn't want him. 
then we end up with a school called Cavendish. This school, have you watched Cell Black Age, where they just go one door, close the other door? This is what this school was for, it looks like. I did not know this school was for children with severe emotional and behavior problem. They tried to stop my son in that school. I had fought with the local authority for over 12 months. Only now, I finally got my son into a mainstream school. And how we got into the mainstream school, the specialist school that they forced him into, yeah. they were really good because they identify from day one that he's not meant to be in that place. Exactly, it's not the right environment for him. Yeah. The right so they pulled him all yeah. the way to the point where they actually put a social worker on yeah. our case just to get things going. The good thing about having a social worker at that time, yeah. he now encouraged a meeting because the lady from the local authority was not responding to my emails, my calls, my nothing. I wrote to the MP again. So now the MP was on her case and I was right. She suddenly started responding to my email, but she wasn't willing to review my son education care plan until last month. And I'm like, no, we're not having it. So there was a meeting back in about July and yeah. that's where the first time I saw this lady, we spoke with her. And like this, the specialist school, like I told you, they were so good. The ed teacher had to offer to rewrite my son's education care plan because she said it's not a reflection of who he is. And she did that for us within 24 hours. Literally, in 24 hours, she did that. I applied, and she helped me to select the right mainstream school. I applied for the mainstream school I would like. Yeah and actually called them to find out if they have space because I did not want them to tell me they don't have any space because they didn't apply. Yeah. And my son has started this mainstream school. And because how is that going now? He started um, just this week and it's going amazing. He had an assessment done with them on Monday. I went in on Tuesday for a meeting and they said to me, first thing, the, the, the deputy said to me, I have no clue why they believe that your son belong into a, into a specialist school because he is very, very intelligent. We were blown away by his results from the assessment we done with him, considering it has not been in school for 12 months. I mean, it's just that story that you've told, it's like every aspect of that has actually come out in an interview that I've had previously, but like listening to how much trauma he had actually in primary school, because normally what kind of happens is that, you know, your kid gets labeled hyperactive or whatever else. But to be demonized at yeah. year three is just so appalling, actually. There's no other yeah. way it's completely appalling. And then for it to follow through into secondary school in the way that it did so consistently and so invasively is just unbelievable. And, and it was so bad that even yeah. the doctor from camp, and the, it gets worse, even camps, camps close his case. <laughs> camps close his case. And when the doctor came on the phone, I said, why did, you know, because we had saw a doctor in December of last year, and he said, I'm recommending him to go to this department, I think it best suits him, blah, 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 for him to get yeah. the support and mentor that he needs. Nothing happened when I called. They say he has no case, his case was closed. So I called, Kate, I, called, I called CAMS, and when this doctor came on the phone, he told me that my um, son case was closed when I asked him question about what was in his file, he couldn't tell me. I said to me, I've never looked at my son file, have you? And it was, uh, uh, so I said, that's okay. I've written to the MP. Once I mentioned that, yeah, he went away, came back this, within two hours with response, and it was sincerely apologetic. I was very unprofessional. I'm so, so, the, he, he hung up the phone in me. That's and he, disgusting. And he, when he came back, when I mentioned, I said, the MP is involved, he, he, he becomes so apologetic. By the next day, I was assigned a new psychologist. The psychologist himself came on and he goes to me, Julia, do you believe that you are and your son has been systematically been racially discriminated against? I said, since you brought it up, based on what I've told you, yeah. what do you think? Yeah. Is that even a question? Is that even a question? Yeah. So now my child is in the main, back in the mainstream school which they said to me they could not believe that they thought he needed me. All he needed is a little bit of emotional support, a way to articulate himself. Yeah. That even yeah. the same department in this school said I am not giving my son any immediate same support because they don't believe he needs it. He should be leaving school. Yeah. But he has to repeat to catch up now. So he's now repeating at year seven? 10. 
year 10. Yeah. Which, no. is, not, which he's not very happy about. But of I have course. to explain to him, you know, because he's missed an entire year of school, spent it in a school. Literally, you, they had the school that they, have, they placed my son in, two hours PE a day. I said, why? But you know why when you go there? Because literally, you walk through one door, there's just enough space for you to stand with another person, there's another door. That's horrible. With no handles. So it really is just like, it's kind of like an asylum, actually. Yep. In a learning environment. Yep. Yeah, but I'm telling you, this experience I've had, yeah, especially in the past 12 months, trying to get my child the support. Yeah. Like, if it, I think I, I so many times felt like I was a terrible parent because all I was seeking was help for my child, yeah, and we were just like victimized. Yeah. And I felt so awful, especially when I sent him to that school that I paid money for and they were supposed to be a Christian school and everything else and the trauma he experienced. That, you know, because I, so I, you I, could I, never have foreseen that. And to be honest, you've done every single thing along the way that you could have done in order to defeat a system that was always set against you. And maybe this is kind of a big question, but what would you say you feel needs to systematically change in order to send your black child to... To a school in the UK and not have that anxiety as a parent? What do you think needs to change? I mean, it's a huge question in terms of... It's a huge question. What, what needs to systematically change is, is the um, preconceived idea because you're black, you're aggressive. Yeah, yeah. You know, because it's not only black boys that get that. I get that. You yeah, know, of course. You're trying to explain yourself, calm down, that there's no need for you to get aggressive. And it almost feels like that's actually put in place in order for you to never actually see what's going on or never criticize or never have the right to challenge because you then, well, not every parent, but like you do just kind of think, oh, maybe I shouldn't say anything now because it's going to be perceived in that way. And you really have to continue because otherwise your voice isn't heard and neither is your kid's voice. Exactly. Because like, even when I was in that meeting with the, um, the local authority and the, the, um, the, the school that they had placed in him and the social worker, the local authority represent, uh, representation, she was so rude and aggressive in her manner if, that my son sat down and he goes, mommy, she, she's got an attitude because we were in a Zoom meeting yeah. and everyone was meant to come on, introduce themselves. This lady had her, her video off and she didn't introduce herself. And then when they, when they started talking about stuff and she could clearly, she, she was agitated. She's like, I've met Julia and her son. We are right here. Say hello. Yeah. 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 And, and my son, and she was on her computer tapping away, like, even though somebody's taking up her time. And when she had done the, when I, I report, I escalated her behavior to, to the complaint department. She had watched cut and paste two different reports, mix the schools up, everything in one, just to get the report done, because she had told me she wasn't going to review it until 2020, um, until October this year. And I'm like, no, you're not doing that. We need so it. when I pulled her out in that meeting about that, she was like, oh, I have 360 something children. I said, what they, I'm not talking about the other 60 something, I'm talking about my one, and we're here now. Yeah. And I said to her, you are not going to play with my child's future. You are, I'm not going to allow you or anyone else to label my child. Yeah. And they asked for um, tutoring because even that, when I got the plan, I did not know in the interim period of him waiting to be placed into a correct school that we could have tutoring. He was just at home doing nothing. He was a friend of mine who told me that you can ask him for tutoring. So I asked for tutoring. So initially before they placed him into this specialist school, yeah, having tutoring. And then when I asked for it again, because I said, I'm not sending him back to the school because it's not in his best interest because he's there with children who was medic highly medicated. So he's now dimming his personality to fit in with these children. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then she, she proceeded to refer him to a specialist school that did outdoor tutoring. So this school called me and I'm like, a school that does tutoring. So I said, what do you do? There goes, we, we give tutoring to children from the age of eight to 25. I said, this is not a school, this is an institutional. When I look it up, it's basically a specialist school again. Yeah, and she's tried to kind of is high. The GCSEs. 
because my son insisted he wanted to do GCSEs. And then when I called her up, I said to her, I, we did not ask you for this. I, she goes, oh, the only reason I leaned towards it because I do GCSE. I didn't say I want my child to stay at home. I want him to be in school, in yeah, a mainstream exactly. school, because he's always been in a mainstream school. Then I found out the actual tutoring company that we had used before that is independent, that she claimed she had refer, refer him to three weeks prior yeah. Before choosing this one, she leaned beyond, beyond my back to that she hadn't even sent the report of um, his referral. Oh and I think that's, that's another thing that goes back to when we're thinking about the education system is actually creating an education system where parents can trust yeah, without so having to go and yeah. check every single time and, and knowing that your kid's interest is in their best intentions. Yeah, because she was, I think because I called her out in the Zoom meeting, she was like, let me make her think I am doing. So yeah. because I already had the tutoring company information, I called them and it goes to me two weeks after the fact, I called them. I goes, I'm still waiting for you, know, you to set up a, um, a meeting for me. She goes, Julia, we literally just got this 30 minutes ago. And in her previous email, she had told me she sent it to both of them, but she didn't. So this has caused me more stress than the actual crazy pandemic that's going on but i'm so grateful now yeah that it's a really good school yeah i'm glad this story has a happy ending as in well. the education system is so low is 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 spirit is so low it's just like i just you just have to nourish it back and you know the good thing about this school that is in from what i see so far they've also fought for him as well from the plan they got because the plan they got was so vague that they said if it failed at this school he goes back to the specialist school. And then when the, the, the head teacher saw that at the school that he's now at, they goes, no, we're not gonna allow you after what he's been through, they've read the whole history, what he's been through. We're not gonna allow you to kind of like set him up to fail. We want you to put everything in place. Yeah. yeah. So we can support him well. And that's so far what I can see at this school, they've done that. Like for example, when they did his assessment, the only thing that he needs to improve upon, which kind of makes sense is his, like his typing skills. And they, they have secure funding from the local authority to Amazing. have him do, do, a, do a course to, to improve that. Wow. Well, I'm really glad that he's now in an, in an institution that you also trust as well as the fact that he's flourishing. It, 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 it's, 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 only, it's only a few days, but it's coming. Um, but I'm telling you, like, you know, his, his whole spirit, the way he should be now, you can feel it's it. just broken. Yeah, so he's just trying to rebuild it. I have to, I have to like slowly try to rebuild it. But I strongly believe now that it will be rebuilt for him. And he just showed when they showed the result. I wasn't surprised by the result because I know my child isn't what they were painting him to be. Yeah, because yeah. You've got adults who can't articulate themselves. It doesn't mean that you need to be in a special institution. No, no. It just means that your employer need to put things in place that probably makes your your job a little bit easier. Of course, of course. You know? So yeah, it's just, it's, I'm telling you, it's been a journey. It's, uh, uh, it's you've taken us on the journey. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a journey, but I'm telling you, I can actually laugh again. And like, even when we got this school, right? We got this school because I prayed so much. I've got, we got this school. I found out that he got this school because I phoned the schools. A week after he was offered the place, I found out because I, I just got up one morning and my spirit says to me, Julia, I called the schools. And I called all the schools I put down and the school called me back. I had to pull over. I broke down. When I, start, when, when I answered the phone and she said what she said, I cried. She goes, Julia, has it been a hard time? I said, you don't understand. You can't even understand. Me. You can't even understand. You know, I, just, I, I was literally, I had to pull over and I was crying. She goes, Julia, has it been a hard time? I said to her, you don't understand. Yeah. And this lady at the local authority took a week to tell us about it. Yeah, it's just insane. That is insane. You know, but we, we got there, but I'm telling you, any if advice I have to any parent, whether your child being a girl or a boy, but especially being a black boy in the UK and where the things are going now, you have to put in place and you have to be, you have to review the schools. You have to make sure that whatever your child need, because what put me at a disadvantage, because if I had the money to pay for this assessment that you should have had, then yeah. you would have something on paper because we don't have that. 
then we are at the mercy of the, uh, of the local authority in the schools. But we have to pay attention. Of course. We it's have to course. do research on the schools very well. Yeah. And we have to listen to our children when they come home. Yeah, I think that's actually the most important advice that I've, you know, managed to take away from this is actually... Listening. Yeah, you have to listen to your children because and some parents, and black parents as well, because when I, I, I was born in Jamaica, and, you know, the teacher said, you did. It doesn't matter what the teacher said. And adults said, you did. But in the society that we're living in right now, we have to listen to our children. Yeah, we have to change it, right through it. Yeah. We have to change it. And they're just like, oh, that this helps someone. But literally, I'm telling you, I've been on the journey. <laughs> I don't want to experience again. My child is emotionally scarred from it. And like, you know, if, like I said, I feel bad because I was trying so hard to make sure he has a good No, I understand, but you did everything in your power to do the right thing. Thank you so much for speaking to us today.